Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today I thought we would do a little bit of a tour of the front yard. We've seen the backyard, now it's time to see the front. So it's growing alright. Uh, as you can see, the Japanese maple behind me is growing huge. Oh my god. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's just get to it. So here's the, uh, the front boulevard garden. This is the one underneath the little leaf linden that is growing beautifully. We water it and, uh, and look after it really, really well. Underneath we have the um, geraniums that are growing really, really nicely, uh, all in bloom. This is one that we actually dug up out of the ditch. Uh, it's doing fantastic. And then I've planted a variety of other little geraniums, little cranes bills, uh, as well as there's some daylilies. I planted some uh, uh, pansies as filler, and I've also got some uh, alyssum that are going to be hopefully creeping out over the sidewalk. And then I've got all kinds of hosta. This one is uh, Choo Choo Train. This one over here is some in substance. Uh, I've got a Royal Standard that's new just back there. Along the rock, we have some hens and chicks. And then uh, the, another daylily. There's three daylilies in this garden. I like things in sequence. This is Abike, I don't even know, the drinking gourd pasta. This one's really, really fun. The leaves turn into a little bird bath. Underneath here is whiskey sours. As you can see, the uh, the geraniums are just growing like mad. Just uh, some more hardy geranium here. This is a different variety. This one I love the smell of the leaves. It's kind of got a, like a, a cedary, musky kind of smell. Really, really nice. So after you water, another daylily. We've got the uh, um, hyacinths that are just finishing up, and some uh, daffodils still green. Excuse me, over by this rock, we have some sedum, and it looks like they're going to start to bloom soon, which is really bizarre for sedum. They should be midsummer. Uh, and then another hens and chick just off to the side. And here is uh, just a pan around of the garden. As you can see, the sun's going to take over here. And let's go give it a look see. I absolutely love the uh, the boxwoods in this garden. Then we've got the corkscrew hazel that's doing really nicely. And uh, down here we have some gallardia uh, blanket flower that has uh, come back this year. It's always slow to come back and I've got some more just over here. And the alyssum that's going to uh, uh, crawl over the sidewalk hopefully. And then we've got this fun type of hens and chicks that seems to be reverting back to its old self. I forget what this one's called, Obscurity or something. And then we've got some Cameo Hosta. This Hosta is absolutely beautiful. Look at how big it is. It's so small. In comparison to the size of the hens and chicks, it's teeny tiny. And then we've got some Chrysandra and um, some Pansies. And over here, these are just species tulips that are done and they're just going to seed now. We've got some uh, Hosta Tiny Tears. That's so cute. I love that one. And then we've got some, um, some more uh, tulips, species tulips that have gone to seed. And then we've got the Japanese forest grass that's underneath the tree. It's going to have to get moved, I think, because the tree is now starting to really shade it out. Up here on the step we have uh, a hibiscus. I'll, uh, I'll maybe try to put another photo of a hibiscus up in the corner of this hibiscus. Um, it doesn't have any very many flowers out today. But uh, it will. It will have more. <laughs> the Japanese maple, like I said, has grown huge. It's gigantic. It's probably uh, six feet across and about uh, five and a half feet tall. And uh, I've got the supports in here because it's a weeping variety. It doesn't naturally want to get terribly tall. So I'm supporting some, some branches. And next year, I think I'm going to be able to uh, take those sticks out. I actually might put more sticks to make it go a little taller because I want it to be tall. I want it to be about as tall as me so that we can trim out the bottom and be able to see under it. And then maybe the grass can survive. Then we've got another one of the, the boxwoods there. It's doing beautifully. And the tall flocks. And then under the tall flocks we have some uh, creeping sedum. Then over here we have some more sedums. I love the contrast between the uh, green foliage the gray, blue, and then the red foliage. It's really nice. 
and then we've got the uh, Miscantha sinensis and a lot of traffic. This is my favorite boxwood. Oh, it's so pretty. Soon I'll have to trim them again. I hate trimming them. <laughs> uh, I like the way they look. So this banana was one of the red bananas that uh, I had inside. It got aphids and it got white fly and it got spider mites. You name it, it got it. So it's, uh, it's recovering now and uh, the leaves are starting to come out uh, relatively normal now. They were really, really gross for a while. But uh, that's, that's uh, par for the course when you just have them in to survive over the winter. And then here's Hosta June. Not sure what this Hosta is, but it's really pretty. And then back at the back I have the um, uh, variegated uh, Lily of the Valleys. They are so beautiful. I love those. And then this is where I basically plant my tropical bulbs. Uh, or whatever tropicals that I want to plant in the ground for the season and these are the um, uh, spider lilies Hymenicalis or iris uh, what is it ismine that, this one's sulfur queen and this so it's gonna be like a yellowy uh, blush color and then this one's white so look forward to that and then um, I also have some uh, bulbs of uh, Esculenta, uh, Colocasia Esculenta elephant ears just over here. I don't know if they're going to come up. They didn't look so good from the basement, but uh, they're planted there. And let's go look at the planters. So here are the planters. Both of them are planted the same. Uh, this is a um, Alocasia um, Royal Shields, I think. Royal Shields. It's got a nice dark color and then the underside of the leaf has a nice contrast. So I hope that they get tall. I think that these ones are supposed to get to be about three or four feet tall. So they'd be perfect size to uh, to be on either side of the door. And then thanks to you guys, I've finally decided to uh, go with a, um, a potato vine, the, the, the green one. And these coleus, hopefully they will return to their normal uh, beautiful color. They're not looking so good at the moment. But, uh, and then also on the inner side I put a begonia because I was finding that the inside where it's most shaded the plants didn't do well and they didn't really flower so begonias hopefully will be able to uh, sustain uh, some some pretty look to the to the pot on the inner side and again here is the other side same idea we got the the shields um, alocasia We've got the uh, begonia. This begonia, I think I'm going to need to chop down because it's really, really tall. Then we've got the um, potato vines and the coleus. Now let's go check out the uh, the big um, ice cream banana pot. So down in the bottom, I have the. I'm carrying it through. I've got the um, sweet potato vines in green. And I've also got the coleus. I really thought that this coleus leaf was really unique. And then I have some salvia to add some height. This salvia gets to be about three feet tall and it just covered in blue flowers. Absolutely love it. And then look up, look way up. This was the ice cream banana that I took downstairs. It's not doing it very much at the moment. It is putting out new leaves. We have a new leaf that's uh, coming through here. There's a curly cue right there and that's uh, attached to a new leaf. So it will be growing very, very soon. It just needs more hot temperatures and it will be off to the races. The other day it was uh, really windy and uh, bananas just tear in the wind so um, unfortunately the, the leaf doesn't look so good but it's par for the course with bananas. And this one starting off so tall it's going to be where I want it to be. I want it to be up in this section here um, so that it doesn't hit any of the cars with its leaves uh, and it just will look so cool to be up in kind of the second story of the house. So this has been the Front Yard Tour. I hope you enjoyed, and I'd love to see uh, your garden, so post uh, photos to either Instagram or uh, Plants and Things What's Growing. I'd love to see that on Facebook. Anyway, until next time, happy growing, everyone. In Europe, do they just call it ginger? I don't know. <laughs> so, and then I've got some frosted mouse ears. I'm not 100% sure what the difference between Mighty Mouse and Frosted Mouse is. Um, from this angle, I see that there's a bluish tinge to this one,